Hey, I'm Scythian and welcome to the channel. We're focusing on Star Citizen and the goal of at least these first few videos is to help new people get their bearings in the verse while showing the playable state of the game as new patches come out. This is still an alpha so expect a few glitches to say the least. So on the left side of the main menu here we have three game modes. The Persistent Universe. This is the open world space sim game where you can explore the galaxy and play with all your friends. Star Marine is a multiplayer FPS, however no one really plays it anymore due to the amount of bugs. While I'm sure they're currently working on fixing them, they've got more important priorities such as finishing Squadron 42 and smoothing out bugs in the Persistent Universe. So it may be some time before we see a Star Marine update. And at the bottom we have Arena Commander. This is used for dogfighting, racing, and just open flying if you want to practice your flight skills. You can face either NPCs or other players, however it also contains some bugs, so you won't catch too many people in this mode either, but facing the NPCs can be pretty fun and it's good practice. So let's go ahead and jump into the Persistent Universe. The first thing it's going to have you do is create your character. This gets reset pretty much every patch, so I wouldn't go too in depth creating the perfect character this time, and you'll be able to recustomize your character at any point. But if you're a fan of character creation, go ahead and check it out. Next, it's going to have you pick your starting location within the Stanton system. For now, you have three choices. First, we have Lorville, which is the capital of Hurston. Since the town was mainly built for its workers, it's pretty run down and in no way beautiful. The main place of interest here is Tamanian Sons, where you can purchase weapons, armor, clothing, and mining heads for the Prospector and Mole. Second, we have Area 18, the capital of Arcorp. This is a very commercialized city, in fact the entire planet's surface has been covered by commercial buildings. The main places of interest here are the Trading Tower located in Arcorp Plaza, Center Mass for both ship and personal weapons, Cubby Blast for more weapons, and Dumper's Depot for ship components. And last we have New Babbage, the capital of Microtech, a more futuristic city full of the latest technology. There are a lot of places of interest here, including another center mass location, Omega Pro for ship components, and Shubin Interstellar for mining laser heads. I'm going to split the tutorials up into different videos on each topic so that you guys can pick and choose what you're interested in learning about and aren't stuck with a long video. This first tutorial will cover the bare basic mechanics. So let's go ahead and jump into the verse. So whenever you log in, you'll be laying in a bed. This is just a generic room that gets assigned to you at each login, so it's not really your room and there's nothing to do in here. So don't worry about missing anything. In the future, they will allow you to rent slash purchase and customize a room, but for now they're just a spawn point, and you'll return to your last location's apartments upon death or re-logging. So you're going to go ahead and press Y to get out of the bed, but if you're stuck, Shift Y will get you out of the bed as well. Alternatively, you can also press F to interact with the environment around you to get up, sit, lay down, log out, and so forth. Before we leave the apartment, we should familiarize ourselves with the controls, and if you want, change any around to better suit your playstyle. Press Escape to open the main menu and select Options. From here, we're going to go to key bindings. This shows you a list of all the set controls on a regular keyboard, and you can switch view between flight or on foot controls. You can also switch to gamepad or a flight stick layout in the bottom right corner, but I find those layouts to be inaccurate due to the variety of devices available. To change any of the key bindings or add more options that don't have a preset key, click on Advanced Controls Customization in the lower left corner. Here we can set different commands to any key we want, and if we press Y after setting the command, we can require a double tap to activate it. This offers a wide range of customization and allows you to have more controls closer to hand if you hate reaching across the keyboard. Next we're going to press F1 to open our MOBA glass. This is an augmented reality interface that provides us with access to most of our in-game options. First we have Comlink. Aside from a larger chat window, this is where you can see everyone that's in your server and send friends requests, party invites, and mute people. You can also change your chat settings in the top right corner here. 
and at the top left, switch between current chat channels, friends lists, and pending requests. Aside from opening Comlink through the MobiGlass, we can also press F11 to directly open it. We will also use Comlink when requesting takeoff and landings, which I will cover later in the video. Next, we have the Vehicle Loadout Manager. This is where we can customize our ship's entire loadout, everything from the weapons to the paint. I will cover the parts buying and customization process in a separate video. The Equipment Manager. This is where we customize our character loadout. Our clothing, armor, weapons, even the color of our MOBA glass bracelet can be changed. Next is Skyline, which is our in-game map. From here, we can see the entire Stanton system. Moving the mouse around and holding down left mouse button will rotate the angle of the map, while moving the mouse and holding down right mouse button will move the map around. We can also use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Double clicking on an object will zoom in showing the surrounding area, allowing you to see smaller locations such as space stations and moons. This is useful in setting a route for quantum travel and will be covered further when we get in our ship. Aside from quantum, we can also use the map to locate party members' exact locations, track bounties more easily, and in the future chart courses to other star systems. With the Pyro star system coming in the near future, we will likely see updated map functionality. The MO Trader is used to send AUEC, in-game currency, to friends and party members. Contract Manager is where we can accept missions around the verse. General tab contracts are all legal and will not produce a crime stat but offer a lower payout. There is five categories. Delivery is where you transport goods, Search contracts will have you looking for lost shipments, and investigation, you're locating a missing person. Bounty Hunter pays you to hunt down criminals, whether they are NPCs or another player. You'll need to complete this initial mission before you can accept other bounties. Mercenary contracts offer great payouts, but come with a challenge. You will be clearing a set area of targets. These missions can be hard for new players, especially if going at them solo. These are personally my favorite legal missions to make fast money while building more fighting experience. In the personal tab, we have more questionable contracts. These typically have you stealing, murdering, or smuggling. And while the payouts are often far better than the general tab, they do come with risk. If the mission involves violence, you will likely end up with a crime stat. Crime stats will prevent you from landing at most places, cause guards and station turrets to fire on sight, and if high enough, create a bounty on your head for other players to chase. Upon death, you will respawn in a jail for a set amount of time. The most risk-free personal contract is hacking a comm array. If you read this mission to the right, called Lights Out, it's asking you to hack the comm array. Upon completion, you will be paid 19,500 AUEC. This is a fantastic amount of money with little to no risk. The mission takes only a few minutes to complete. The Accept tab just shows your current contracts. History shows all the missions you've completed this session, though in future I expect that to show all completed contracts. And Beacons is where you can create or accept a beacon for transport if you're stuck somewhere. We will complete a few contracts and cover beacons in a later video. Liveworks AR is currently useless in-game, but is used in the hangar-only mode to place objects. Vehicle maintenance services is used to restock the ship and will be covered later in this video. The journal provides some info and lore based on where you currently are, and it will also show you your current crimes if you hold a crime stat. The center button with six squares will bring you back to the main screen. This screen shows our vitals, the atmospheric conditions, current balance in our wallet, and our remaining oxygen time, which will decrease once out of an oxygen-rich environment. So we're going to go ahead and close our MOBA glass and take a look at the inner thought menu. Holding F and right-clicking will open the menu. This menu allows us to interact with our character on this first page, we have a few set options, such as wiping the helmet visor if it's wet or obstructed, 
or force responding if we get stuck. It also has some blank options that fill in with recently used features. The actions menu allows us to do quite a bit, such as view and select different weapons or equipment that we have, provide another way of accessing the MOBA glass, or allowing us to control our flashlight and remove our helmet. You'll notice most of these options all come preset to a keybind already, so this menu is not necessary to access most of these features and you'll likely only use it for emotes or if a keybind stops working, which in the current alpha state of the game can happen quite often. I mean here I'm trying to use an emote and it refuses to work properly. The emotes do work most of the time, but these glitches are part of the current game and if one happens to you often, I encourage you to report it online as this will help shape the game's development and bring attention to more bugs. They can't fix them without us pointing them out. The last thing I want to show you before leaving the room is our inventory, which like most games is accessed through eye. This can be used to consume food or drinks you've stored and will show you if you're full during hand mining. Aside from that, this inventory has no other uses right now. So let's head on out. To open a door, we can either click F or hold F and select Open. Clicking F quick selects the first option, and with doors and most elevator call buttons, there is only one option. After leaving the room, we will be in a common area or hallway, depending on where you've spawned. You'll notice the rooms are numbered, but again at this moment in time, we don't have a set room, so don't worry about this. Once at the elevator, we will click F or hold F and click the left mouse button to call the elevator. It's not instantaneous, so just wait a few seconds for it to arrive. So in this brief moment, we can enjoy the snowy city of New Babbage out this window here. On the elevator control panel, we will hold F and scroll down to select which floor we want to go to. In this case, it is the lobby. Be prepared to see a lot of strange NPCs who don't know what they're doing, such as the man talking to the tree, or these three on the couch. They are broken half the time, though it is getting better. I've seen some strange things that, well, I can't unsee. So before I go to the spaceport, I'm just going to quickly show you the finds payment terminal. This is where you can pay parking tickets and such, and they are located in every town. 99% of people don't pay them and either hack the crimes away or do the jail time. So from here, we are heading to the Metro Loop. So at this station, we have two trams to choose from. Right now we're heading to the spaceport. There are maps at each station, and since this train is already here, I'll just show you the map at the next stop. The doors take a few seconds to close, and the ride can take a bit of time, so I'm going to fast forward to the next stop. Above most transit gates, we can see the time of departure, and once it's gone, it'll show an arriving time for the next train. Taking a look at one of the station maps, we are currently at New Babbage Interstellar Spaceport and we just came from the housing district of Aspire Grand. If we went on the opposing tram at the first station, we would have ended up at the Tobin Expo Center, which at the time of filming this was the home of the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. And from there, we would have head to the Commons. The Commons contains a bunch of shops and food stands, as well as an elevator to the surface with a vehicle bay. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward the next bit here since it's pretty much a straight path to the spaceport terminal. I left it in the video though so you can see the path though there is no other way to go. So quick tour of the spaceport lobby here as it's more than just a take off and go place. To the left we have ship rentals which is pretty self explanatory. Up here, we have another surface entrance where we can head up to the planet's surface using these elevators. We can take out a land vehicle at these terminals here, though I don't have any on this new account that I made for the tutorial. And up here is just for show as there is no commercial ship area, maybe one day. So let's go and take our ship out and get flying. Love the holographic tech here by the way in New Babbage, everything is nice and labeled. So we're going to use the vehicle retrieval console with F. 
This shows you all the ships you have available, which you can either purchase online or purchase slash rent in game if you have saved enough credits. On this account I have two ships available, the Origin 100i and the CO Nomad. To the right of the Nomad here, you will notice a claim button. So if our ship is destroyed, lost, left in another spaceport, or you happen to log off without landing, you will need to reclaim your ship to your current location. In future, this will be tied in with ship insurance, but for now, insurance is not in play. After clicking claim, we can see a delivery time which will start to count down once we file the claim. You'll notice an expedited fee. This is to speed up the delivery process. The expedited time will be the remaining time after paying the fee. If you're pinching pennies, I recommend waiting until that remaining time hits zero as the fee lowers every second. You'll still be waiting the same amount of time, but pay a little less. Maybe I'm just cheap though. But since we have another ship available, we don't have to worry about this ship. And once claimed, we can take it out at any station without having to reclaim. Ships only need to be claimed if something has happened to them. So let's take out our other ship by clicking the retrieve button. Once it's done loading, it'll show us what hangar our ship has spawned in. In our case, it's hangar 4. Then we will take the elevators to head to the appropriate hangar. Again, pressing F to click the call button. Select our hangar on the screen and away we go. Entering our ship will differ from ship to ship as the doors are all hidden in different places, some more obvious than others. For the Origin 100, it's this small cutout rectangle shaped panel to the right. Once close enough, we can hold F and click open door. From here, the door will open and we can wait for our fancy ladder to extend and enter our ship. While most ships have the lights on upon entry, I find the Origin series to be depressing and dark until powered up. It's pretty ironic since they are supposed to be luxurious and high end. I'm sure it's a coding flaw that is far down on the list of priorities to be fixed though. Maybe one day we can get in our fancy sports ships without worrying about tripping. You'll notice I closed the door. I always recommend closing the door behind you as some people like to follow you on your ship, kill you and steal the ship. They don't get to keep it long term, but griefing you brings them much joy. To sit in our seat, we're going to interact using the F key. Once the animation is done, we can press R to power up the ship. R is flight ready, which powers up the main electrical as well as the engines, shields, and weapon systems. At this point, I recommend you take a look at the flight key bindings to familiarize yourself with some of the controls before taking off. You won't learn all these commands in one run, but there are a few key ones to know for basic flight. Like most games, the W, A, S, and D keys control the direction you accelerate or strafe in. The space key will strafe up, and left control will strafe down. Q and E will roll the ship, shift will use the afterburners, which is a speed booster. This will cause you to accelerate faster, but will result in overheating the engines if held for too long especially in an atmosphere. N will retract and extend the landing gear, and L will toggle the exterior lights. As mentioned earlier, R is for flight ready. However, we can also individually control the main power, engines, shields, and weapons with U, I, O, and P. Y will exit the seat. C is cruise control, which maintains speed, and V is for decouple. I will explain this function further once in the ship. If you have a ship with directional thrusters, then K is the VTOL toggle, which stands for vertical takeoff and landing. This will change the thrusters direction from hover to accelerate mode. F4 changes our cameras from first person to third person, and Z unlocks the camera's direction for free look. On the mouse, we have left mouse click for primary weapons and right mouse click for secondary weapons. Clicking the mouse wheel to lock and fire missiles and scrolling the wheel for adjusting the ship's max speed limit. It will take a few tries to remember all these commands and the rest of the keybinds can be learned over time. Now that we've reviewed the commands, it's time to try them out. 
The first we're going to try is F4 for third person and Z for free look. It's not as important in a smaller ship, but sometimes in the bigger ships it's good to see your surroundings as the slightest movement during takeoff can result in you hitting the walls and getting stuck. We will now need to contact flight control to request takeoff. Press F11 to open comm link and go to the friends tab in the top corner. Here we will see a contact for the spaceport or station we're currently at. Click the call button in the bottom right corner to hail flight control for takeoff. This process will be repeated to request landing. Now we just wait for the doors to open and we're ready to take off. The hangar doors will either be in front of you or above you. Again reviewing our controls here, hold space to strafe up and left control to strafe down. After strafing up, we're going to hold W to accelerate forward. Now we're going to use Q and E to roll the ship. Rolling is great for avoiding rocks in an asteroid field, and rolling into turns is much faster and efficient when dogfighting. Moving our mouse around will change the direction of the ship. The nose of the ship will follow, but you will notice some delay as drag prevents the ship from responding instantaneously. CIG wanted to make the flight experience as realistic as possible while providing a fun and engaging game. Some dogfights can require some pretty crazy maneuvering, so I hope you don't get motion sick too easily. Using N will extend and retract the landing gear. Landing gear goes up automatically when entering quantum, but will need to be manually lowered before landing. So we want to get off planet. Let's go ahead and use our map F2 to set course for a nearby location. I want to go to one of the moons orbiting Microtech. Use the scroll wheel to zoom in and click on the location of your choosing. Then click set route up top and the path will go from being a dotted line to a solid green. Now that we have our destination set, we will have a visible waypoint in game. The reason we want to set a route before quantum traveling is to make it easier to find your desired travel point. Without a route set, you will be able to see all the nearby quantum travel points, and it can be a little overwhelming and hard to find where you're going if you aren't familiar with the locations in game yet. You will also need to set routes if you are traveling far, as those locations are not always visible to the quantum drive due to distance. To be able to quantum travel, we will need to leave atmosphere. This is due to the friction of the atmosphere which would rip the ship apart. To the right of our heads up display, we see our altitude and to the left our speed. Under altitude is our quantum fuel and regular fuel. To the lower left, we see our flare and chaff count as well as the current g-force we are feeling. Beside the g-force indicator, we can see gear, CPLO and ESP. When the white dot is beside gear, it would mean our landing gear is out. CPLO is for our decoupled status, and ESP is an aim-assisted toggle that comes preset on. This automatically decreases the sensitivity of your controls when you aim close to a target. So to leave atmosphere, I like to head up at an 80 to 85 degree angle. Any steeper, and the flight path vector starts to rotate. You'll notice my speed maxed out at 199 meters per second. This is because when you first enter your ship, the max speed limit is set for a safe range that won't overheat the engines and atmosphere. Using the scroll wheel, we can increase or decrease our speed limiter. At high speeds, we need to be careful when making sudden turns as the g-force will cause the blood to rush to our head, resulting in a temporary blackout. If we roll our ship 180 degrees, the blood will rush to our feet, clearing our vision. As mentioned earlier, when familiarizing ourselves with the controls, holding shift will use the afterburner to boost our speed. Holding this too long will start to overheat the engines. You'll receive a warning before they overheat to give you a chance to back off. Overheating slows you down for a few seconds, and the engines take a little while to cool down. While flying on your own, this is no big deal, but in a fight, that engine stall could be a step closer to your death. So now that we're far enough above the planet, our quantum route indicator changed from red to blue, letting us know that we're at a high enough altitude. 
On Microtech, this happens at around 12,000 meters, and currently we are just shy of 26,000 meters. Click B to begin spooling the quantum drive. You will see a spool percentage at the top of the HUD, and while facing our beacon, we can see the calibration status raising as well. We cannot quantum travel until these two processes are complete. Once complete, hold down B to initiate quantum travel. Some interesting nerd info about quantum travel in this game, quantum speed is 0.2 C or 20% the speed of light. Without quantum, if we were going at an average cruising speed of 1000 meters per second towards Calippo here, which was 65,000 kilometers away from our current position, it would take just over 18 hours to travel here, and we just did it in seconds. And if that wasn't far enough, the distance of 72 million kilometers between Microtech and Arc L5 would take about 834 days in real time without quantum. So needless to say, this game is massive. Sorry if that bored you, but I figured some of you may be intrigued by that info. So we're going to go ahead and quantum back towards Microtech to land at Port Tresler. This is a space station in orbit just above the planet. If you're planning to head off and do missions, I recommend landing at a space station, so that if you die, you don't respawn on planet and have to go through the exiting atmosphere part over and over. Also, if you plan to explore cold places, I recommend picking up the Novikov Extreme Cold Armor suit while at Port Tresler. I will cover armor and weapons in another tutorial though. Quantum does not always bring you as close as it can, so double check if you can quantum again before flying normally. Even if we were close enough, I like to keep the quantum drive spooled so that I can see the remaining distance. This gives me the chance to slow down in time and not overshoot the station. Also, before landing, I just want to cover some of the remaining features we mentioned earlier. Left mouse button is our primary weapon, and right mouse button would be our secondary weapon, though this ship does not have any. Now that we are close to the station, I'm holding X to slow down. You can also turn around and do an afterburn in the opposite direction. To hail the station for a landing pad, we will use the same process that we did for takeoff. Press F11 and under the Friends tab, contact the station. Once we have a pad assigned to us, it will mark the location with a circled arrow. Since there is a lot of obstructions around the stations, I recommend lowering your speed limit so that you don't fly too fast at this point. Don't forget to press N to lower our landing gear before touching down to avoid damaging the ship. And look at that, the cops are pulling me over for a scan. The local security forces in the area will randomly stop you to scan your ship for contraband or to see if you have any infractions. You need to come to a complete stop until they give you the go ahead to move, otherwise they will open fire. I recommend pressing I to shut your engines down once you have stopped. Now we can go ahead and complete our landing process. You just need to line yourself up with the box and use left control to lower down. If you're not comfortable doing that, all you need to do is hold N once you're in the box's range to initiate an auto landing, though this process can be slow. If you need to refuel or resupply the ship, press F1 to open the Moby Glass and select the vehicle maintenance services. Sometimes you need to do this while hovering above the pad before landing as it can bug out. Since we barely used any fuel and our passive hydrogen fuel scoops refueled the tiny amount we did use, we don't need to refill anything. We just have regular wear and tear on the ship, hence the four credits for repair. So before I wrap this video up, we just have a few more commands to quickly run through that we looked at on the key binding map earlier in the video. Pressing L toggles our exterior lights on and off. C toggles cruise control, which just holds our max speed limiter set speed. And V decouples the ship. This turns off the opposing thrusters. Normally when you let go of W, thrusters kick in to start slowing you down. When decoupled, those thrusters remain off, allowing you to move in your current direction at whatever speed you are presently going. This is great for dogfights as you can spin around to shoot while still traveling in the direction you were originally facing. 
Even though I turned to my right, I'm still traveling away from the space station. And as soon as I toggled decoupled mode off, you see the thruster kick in to slow me down. If you get tired of the in-game chat in the top left corner, you can hide it with F12. The last feature we're going to look at is VTOL, Vertical Takeoff and Landing. There are currently only 11 ships in game with this feature. This does not include ones that have fixed VTOL, nor does it include the concept ships that will likely have this feature. If you happen to own one, then this feature is one you will need to know. I will put a list of VTOL ships in the description down below. Pressing K changes thruster direction. Having them vertical for takeoff and landing provides more stable control, and as the flight system continues to evolve with future updates, this will be a great feature for hovering in atmosphere, as non-VTOL ships will begin to overheat when trying to hover for extended periods. Having them horizontal provides full power for acceleration. And that concludes our basic tutorial. Welcome to the verse, and I hope you enjoy the game. Keep an eye out for the other tutorials to come, and if you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Since this is my first video, feedback would be greatly appreciated in the comments below. Have a good one, and stay safe in the verse.